Okay, I want to talk to you about donor healing and follicle regeneration using A cell, which is an extracellular matrix. When we perform FUE, uh, I make a minimal depth incision. I remove uh, about two millimeters of tissue. Uh, hair follicles are about, uh, on average, 4.9 millimeters in length, which means that I'm plucking out uh, well over two millimeters of the follicles, and I'm leaving stem cells behind in the uh, subcutaneous adipose. Uh, so the idea is that if we can come up with some way to improve the healing and regenerate hair follicles, we've got something. And I've been doing this for a long time with A cell, which is a bimodal uh, extracellular matrix derived from the bladder of pig. When we perform FUE, we get these extraction sites, we get beautiful graphs, but one of the initial things we noted was some patients would develop hypopigmentation. And the question was, how can we prevent this? So when you look at the skin, there are three things that give skin their color. One is the melanin in the skin. Another is the blood vessels that feed the skin, and you can see these little capillaries just below the surface of the skin because of the cross-polarization I'm using here. And you also have this little shadow that you can see under this three-hair follicular grouping that adds color. And you can see in this hypopigmented area, we're missing all three. So if you, when you remove follicular groups and you don't add hair back into it, you can get this model donor area. We can treat it using micropigmentation. We can get an excellent result doing this, a perfect result. But isn't it better to grow hair? So I started using A cell and I wanted to see what type of regeneration we were getting and what the improvement was. So I used this little counting device that I made, and I put a, a little purple dot on each extraction site. And this particular patient was an artist patient. And you can see that all the extractions are in the center of the donor area. Uh, there's fewer as you move into the sides of the scalp. This is a terrible machine, stay away from it. So a cell, in addition to being an extracellular matrix, it has growth factors glycoproteins, and it does have some structural proteins as well. And I did a retrospective study looking at my patients where I used A cell and didn't use A cell. And in the patients that I did not use A cell, I could find or locate 100% of my extraction sites. In the patients that I used A cell, I could not locate 52% of my extraction sites. So with the A-cell, we got improved healing in the donor area. We had improved circulation. And I was pretty sure we were getting follicle regeneration, although I, I couldn't 100% prove it until I did this study. And so what I did was I <clears throat> took my A-cell and I added it to a hyaluronic acid, which is non-cross-linked. This is pro-inflammatory. It's used in a lot of skin preps and a lot of cosmetics, and, and uh, it's a great product to add to it. Helps promote healing. And you can see these little right, white crystals in here are the A-cell. I put a drop in each extraction site. And when it stays in the extraction site, you can see the A-cell the next day. But there's also some leakage from these e extraction sites. And, and I, you know, I think that's one reason why it was only um, allowing me to uh, not be able to find 52% of my extraction sites in my retrospective study. So I designed a study where I used a photo-initiated uh, product uh, that we, we engineered which is a liquid bandage. We extracted the graft, applied the liquid bandage, added the A cell, and then <clears throat> we uh, uh, had this liquid bandage with monomers with a photo-initiated reactive group. We then uh, applied the ultraviolet light and this formed an insoluble bandage because the monomers 
bound together in a covalently bonded network. So here you can see the ultraviolet light that we treated the bandage with, and you can see the bandage in place in the, in the picture on the right. So here are 12 extraction sites. You can see the rectangle of the bandage. You can see there is, um, on the next day, a sort of a serosanguinous exudate, which is confined, confined to the area of the bandage. But this is the leakage that I think affects some of our <clears throat> donor healing. So we followed this for three months, and you can see this little circle in the center is a four-hair follicular group. And this four hair follicular group, that was my reference points to follow all the extraction sites going forward. Uh, and uh, now you can see that I have green circles. And everywhere there's a green circle, there's definitely follicle regeneration. Wherever there's a red circle, I wasn't sure if there was follicle regeneration or whether the follicle that I see inside the circle was part of an adjacent follicular unit. And in the purple circles, it's definitely no follicle regeneration. But I had definite follicle regeneration in 58% of the extraction sites. Now, this means that in uh, some of the extraction sites, I had a single follicle regrow. In some of the extraction sites, I had three follicles regrow. So it was pretty exciting to me, and we've been using it ever since. And what I try to do with my patients is have them stay up to midnight before they go to sleep, and that way the A-cell has a better chance of drying in and not coming out when they lay their head on the pillow. But I've come up with a new protocol where I use the patient's blood to form a liquid bandage. It's a biodegradable liquid bandage that we apply to the, the uh, donor area. Uh, we, this yellow um, material here is the patient's blood uh, once I processed it. And then I create a PRF, which is a kind of a lower concentration of, of PRP. Uh, I don't use any anticoagulant in it. And then I add calcium gluconate. And so within about 15 minutes, I formed this biodegradable degradable liquid bandage that helps to seal the A cell in place. And patients that have had this new method of sealing the donor area compared to what we did before are telling me that there was much less leakage out of the donor area on the evening following surgery. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, working on some new things. Uh, we are looking at vertiporfin, but I think this is probably just going to improve uh, uh, the formation of scar tissue. I don't know that it's going to help regenerate hair follicles and you have to be really careful with that one because you it's typically injected and patients have to avoid too much uh, exposure to light following the injection uh, it, you know it, it's used for macular degeneration which is a you know in your eye and uh, so if you get out in the sunlight afterwards and some of that got in your bloodstream it might not be good for you uh, so if I've got to come up with a way to deliver it that's not necessarily uh, the way it's currently being delivered. But it is, it is a photo-initiated product as well. So uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned. we got a lot more exciting stuff in the pipeline. Four Hair is run by Dr. Cole with 30 years of few hair restoration experience, and we offer the most cutting-edge technology available. In fact, the Four Hair Enterprise sub-company Cole Instruments manufactures custom-made tools and automated tools for hair restoration physicians all over the world. Our quality, expertise, and skills are superior to other clinics. Our reputation and results are the best in the world. It's time to restore your hair, it's time to choose Four Hair. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the little bell button to get notifications of Four Hair's video uploads. For online consultation click on the link on the screen or in the video description.